Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I put together my first set of cards using the July 2023 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring the bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared a look at the brand new sheet load of cards, July, 2023. This month's sheet load shows you how to make 12 cards from just two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper, some cardstock for matting, and card bases. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you each step in the process to make the new sheet load, and my team of collaborators will be joining me online to showcase their sets. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. To see my Instagram team's cards, it's super easy. I have a link in the description box below to the search over on Instagram. Now to see all of the YouTube videos, there are a few ways you can do that. First, you can try clicking on the hashtag in the title, which I have up on screen now, but that unfortunately isn't always working lately. If you notice that it doesn't pull up the videos you want to see, in the description box below is a link to a playlist that has all of my YouTube team videos. Now please bear with me because I do have to add those after everybody's videos go live, so it might be just a little bit past seven when you can see those, but it's gonna give you just one place to see them all. Now, if you beat me to the punch on the playlist, I do have everybody's channels linked in the description box below, so you can go ahead and go visit their channels and check out their newest video. I know that I'm excited to see what everybody has created this month, so I hope you'll stop by their channels and their Instagram accounts and leave them some love. Here's a look at the main supplies I'll be using today. In yesterday's video, I did go over them in more detail, and as I use them today, I will talk a little bit more about them as well. Now, if I do leave you with any questions after watching the process, make sure to leave those in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be showing you how I chose my coordinating cardstock. I recently made a little swatch ring of both my Gina K and Tailored Expressions cardstocks, and because they're on this handy little ring, I can just hold the samples up and choose what color I want. I ended up going with pineapple from Tailored Expressions for later you'll see me cut some butterflies, and then for my card bases and matting, I chose grass green from Gina K Designs. And now I'm going to show you how to cut the pattern papers. Both pieces will be cut in the same way, and I'm gonna start by cutting strips off the top or rows that are five and a quarter inches tall. So I cut two of those, and then at the bottom, I need two strips that are a half inch tall. Now, because it's kind of hard to hold that and cut it, I did bring in a piece of Scotch removable tape that I just keep right on the trimmer to hold that in place while I make those cuts. Then I'm going to bring back in those five and a quarter inch tall pieces and we're going to cut those for pieces A, B, and C. I will be cutting six pieces that are one inch wide from this piece and I'm going to be using the one inch mark to the left of my cut line just so I can easily push it from right to left. Now once I have those six pieces cut, I'm going to stop because now I need to cut three of my piece C's which are one and three quarters inches wide. Now you'll see there's a little left over at the side and if you look at this month's printable, I do give some suggestions on how you can use that and we will be decorating the insides of the card later with this. Now for the second row, I'm going to do the same thing except these will be for pieces B and C, but really the one inch strips, it doesn't matter if they were cut from the top or bottom, you just need to make sure that you have 12 total that are one inch wide. 
And finally, we're gonna cut piece D, which is gonna be that little decorative strip at the bottom of the image and sentiment area. Now, if your image or sentiment fills this up and you can't fit that piece, you can definitely leave this off. I just wanted to use up a little bit more of that pattern paper. These are gonna be simple cuts. We just cut until we get six pieces that are two and three quarters inches wide by one half inch tall. Now don't forget, you do not have to remember any of these directions or the dimensions. You can check out yesterday's debut video and download this free printable for yourself. While I cut that second piece of pattern paper in the exact same way, I wanted to stop by with a little shout out. And that is to my channel members who reached one year of membership in the month of June. Their names will be scrolling up on screen now. I just want to say an extra special thank you to each of you. Monthly support from my channel members helps keep me creating here on YouTube and Sheetload of Cards free for all. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I have a link in the description box below. Now I'm going to show you how to cut CS1, which is 12 pieces that are 2 and 3 quarters by 2 and a quarter. Now once again, this is a suggested size for your image and sentiment area. You can always adjust this. I'm going to start by cutting three strips off the long edge of my sheet that are 2 and a quarter inches tall. There is a small strip left over at the bottom, and I'm just going to keep that with my white scraps for future cards. Each of these pieces then gets rotated and cut into sections that are two and three quarters inches wide. Now this will take up the complete 11 inch width, so make sure not to do what I call generous cuts. Cut it right at two and three quarters. Now I'm gonna bring in my cardstock for CS2, and I once again chose that coordinating grass green cardstock. And for this, you'll need about one and a half pieces. I brought in a full sheet and a couple scraps, and I'm gonna cut these into 12 pieces that are three inches wide by two and a half inches tall. Kind of like with CS1, I cut strips off the 11 inch edge that were two and a half inches tall, and then rotate and cut those to three Three inches wide. Now for the final three pieces, I'm just going to cut those from the scraps, just figuring out how to make the best use of each piece until once again I have those 12 total mats. Now if you do decide to make your image or sentiment piece a different size, you'll need to adjust these mats as well. Finally for the cutting, I brought in six pieces of that same green that we will cut and fold into 12 card bases. Now the original sketch calls for a top fold card, but if that is not something you prefer, you can definitely make it side fold. For me, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the top fold, so each of these pieces gets cut in half to four and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall. Now you could definitely at this point go ahead and fold it by hand, but I did go ahead and bring in my mini score buddy, put a score line, and then use that bone folder to help me get a crisp fold. Aspen also decided to come in at this point and do a little supervising. Here's a look at my finished pieces so we can start putting the cards together once Aspen leaves my pieces alone. I'm going to be starting the assembly process today by creating the focal points. And to make sure I have enough room for my sentiment, I'm going to be placing the pattern paper D onto the bottom of CS1. After giving Aspen a few more pets and encouraging her to go sit somewhere else, I got a little sticky. I added adhesive to the back of that decorative strip and placed it at the bottom of the sentiment piece. Now mine ended up being about the same height as on the sketch, but again you can always move this up, move it down, remove it completely, whatever fits your image and sentiment and the layout that you like for your card. 
Now to help with aligning this on the edge of my CS1 piece, I did go ahead and bring back in my score buddy and use that ledge so I could get them right up against each other. Once those 12 pieces were finished, it was time to stamp the sentiments. For this, I'm using Sentimental Greetings by Spellbinders. And for the sentiment to kind of match with the pattern paper, I will be using Earl Grey ink from Tailored Expressions. To make quick work of the multiple stamping I have to do, I brought in my mini Misty and got my sentiment set up on that. Now once it's in place, I will be able to just ink it up and stamp it repeatedly so I get those 12 pieces. Now you will notice I have some extra white space on the side. I did that intentionally because later we'll be covering that up with some decoration. For the first stamping, I did ink it up twice to get a nice crisp gray, but for the remaining ones, I could just ink it up and stamp it once. Once those were all stamped, I brought back in my CS2 pieces, added adhesive to the back of the sentiment, and centered that on the green mat. And here's a look at all of those completed. To add some decoration to that focal point, I brought in this die cut set from Spellbinders, which is one of my favorites. It's definitely an oldie, but a goodie. I played around a little bit with the dies and the placement of my sentiment to find out which butterfly I wanted to use, and I ended up going one that was very similar to the butterflies on the printed paper. I cut the shadow from a vellum and the butterfly itself from that pineapple yellow cardstock. To adhere these two layers together, I use my art glitter glue with the fine tip applicator and I only put adhesive on the body of the butterfly. Once the two pieces were together, I did put it under a block and after I had all 12 sets adhered, I did let that sit for about 5 minutes before moving on. Now here you'll see because I only adhered the body of the butterfly, you can add some extra dimension to your card by separating the wings from the vellum shadow. Now it's time to get the card base ready and we're gonna be putting the pattern paper strips on. Per the sketch, the outside two strips will be the same pattern and that middle one will be the coordinating pattern. Now for me, I think it's best to place the outside two first and then you can center the center strip between those. So here I added adhesive to the left one inch piece and I got an even border around the outside edges. Then I got adhesive on the back of the larger piece, placed that on the right side and got that same border. Now when I go to place the middle strip, I can just center it between the two instead of going left to right trying to figure out exactly how much room to leave. I continued assembly of the remaining 11 card fronts in that same way, but this is a time where I wanted to point out you are free to change the placement of these. You could go skinny, wide, skinny. You could start with the wide on the left and do the two skinnier strips on the right. And you could also rotate this sketch. I think I definitely will be trying that later on in the month. I finished the rest of these off camera and while I was doing that, I went ahead and added a piece of white cardstock on the inside so your personal message would be easy to see. Now it's time to get the focal points added. The sketch originally called to have the image and sentiment area kind of in the upper left, but you can definitely play around with this. Just like I had to do here, since my butterfly hangs on the left, I put my sentiment more to the right, and you'll see here both will fit. So I continued adding the sentiments, and then once those were all on there, once again, using liquid glue, I added my butterflies. Now this could have definitely been a place I could have popped those butterflies up with some foam tape, but I did want to keep these nice and flat for mailing. Before we add a little sparkle to the front and finish the cards, I did want to show you how I finished decorating the insides. 
like it suggests on the cutting guide page, I'm going to be using that strip that was left over on the right to make little banners to go on the inside. Now originally I suggested cutting it a little less wide, but I decided to go ahead and leave it as it was, and I cut these into pieces that were one and three quarters inches tall. Then using some scissors, I cut an angle in one, and I use that as a template to cut the remaining 11. After those were all cut, I placed one on the inside of each card and I put the pattern that was the middle strip on the front and you could definitely play around with where you want this on the inside. I just put them in the upper right hand corner. To finish off the cards and add a little sparkle, I brought in my transparent silver glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs and I added three of the smallest size to the body of the butterfly. Now I love these because they add a little bit of shine, but they're also very flat for mailing. And here are some close up looks at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set of cards using the July 2023 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to go check out all of the collaboration team cards by using the hashtag in the title and the links in the description box. And if you want to find out how to download the free printable, check out yesterday's debut video, which is linked in the description box below and will be popped up here in a minute as an end screen. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.